Hello and welcome to Progress Not Perfection. Today I am back at the City County Building, but I'm not interviewing the judge today. I am interviewing a man of great importance, especially in Knox County. I'm talking about the big guy. You know, he's about seven foot tall. I'm very excited about it. I have an interview today with Mayor Glenn Jacobs, and I absolutely cannot wait. So, let's get to it. Let me get everything packed up. We're going to go upstairs, and we'll be back in just a minute. We are officially back inside of the courthouse, and I have a very special guest, Mayor Glenn Jacobs. Thank you so much. Thank you. For being on Progress Not Perfection. Thank you. So I want to make you fully aware this will be broadcast on KCM of Knoxville, as well as YouTube when I get that channel up and going. Sure, that's fine. Yes, can see what we have. <laughs> so I have Googled and Googled, and I cannot figure out why. What led you to the decision to move to Knox County and run for mayor? I've actually lived in East Tennessee for almost 30 years. Um, oh, wow. My wife is from this area. I grew up in Missouri, about two hours north of St. Louis. Came here for work, moved to Knox County about 10 years ago. Uh, my wrestling career was winding down, and I wanted to do something where I felt like we, I was making a contribution to the community. And mm -hmm. what better way to do that than become mayor? That's very, very, very <laughs> true. So, to get a little personal, has anyone close to you ever struggled? And a reminder, addiction can mean many things, drugs, alcohol, exercise, sure. etc. Has anyone struggled close to you? I was in the entertainment industry for, yeah. again, almost 30 years. Right. Uh, so, I saw a lot of folks that I knew, colleagues, um, that had issues with addiction mainly. Uh, alcohol, uh, a lot of drug abuse, uh, especially especially painkillers and uh, and those sort of things. Uh, in my own family, I've been very fortunate that I haven't had anyone in my immediate family yeah. that's had those issues, but certainly uh, over that span, uh, being in WWE, uh, I. There's a, a website, and you can find anything on the internet, but there's a website I stumbled, stumbled across once, and it's terrible. It's called deadwrestlers.com or something like that. Wow. And basically, uh, it, 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 it's not disrespectful, but it does list, like, uh, all the people that right. in wrestling that had died before the age of 50. And I counted 30 people in excess of 30 people that I personally knew. And not not all of them that I knew really well, but just folks that I had run across yeah. uh, at some point. Um, and that that's a huge amount. In fact, uh, as I was thinking about it, that is probably uh, the number one cause of death for folks that that I knew. It's just terrible. Um, so, yes, I, I've unfortunately seen a lot of that uh, with people that I've known. Having traveled so many places across the world, how has the drug pandemic evolved over the past 20 years? Well, I think what we've seen is uh, it, it's whack-a-mole, and it's gone from you know, back uh, cocaine, crack cocaine, then moved to methamphetamine, then uh, to opioids, and you know people still call it the opioid epidemic, and it's not. It, it's now back. You know, there's a lot of uh, Meth is making a huge comeback. Heroin and fentanyl are huge issues. Uh, so it, it really is just, it, it's cyclical. Um, I think the most alarming thing though is the drugs of choice keep on becoming more and more dangerous and deadly. And that's what we're seeing with, with fentanyl. It's absolutely terrible. Uh, and as bad as cocaine and crack and all those things are, I think fentanyl is another level, uh, especially of um, just uh, being lethal um, and yeah. just accidental overdoses. And you know, they're so. putting it in everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and of course, it, it's just so uh, so powerful and so concentrated. And yeah. As you said, you know, it, it can be put in anything. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's the drug of choice has just continually uh, evolved. That's definitely true. You know, when I was a kid experimenting, you know, marijuana or a cigarette, you know, right. or a pain pill, you could do it and you didn't have to think about Don, but unfortunately right. now you do, you know, right. it's, it's very sad. Right. Yes. So as I said, addiction is a pandemic, but 
the epidemic in Knox County, do you see that getting better or worse? We were making some good strides, I thought, uh, before the COVID-19 pandemic, right. and that kind of, just like it did with many other things, that kind of really reshuffled the board. Uh, in fact, one of the metrics that we look at is drug-related deaths, and uh, we had we had reached a point to where those had kind of plateaued, mm -hmm. and uh, they at least weren't accelerating as they were uh, in the previous years, and right. um, then the pandemic hit and, and that all got turned on its head and it's worse yeah. than ever. I think the one thing we have to keep in mind too is we are much more aggressive in deploying naloxone now than we were previously. So I think that skews the number to where they probably, it probably looks better than it really is and you're not comparing uh, apples to apples right. to where you were a few years ago. So uh, I would say unfortunately, you know, unfortunately it's getting worse. Um, we're, we are doing a lot more now, um, but just uh, again with with this rise of fentanyl, uh, that's really become extremely problematic. Yes, I totally agree with that. So, do you think if there were more county-funded rehabilitation facilities to provide free treatment to the addict that wants the help, that that would reduce? I think the first question is, um, people have to have to want that, right? Yeah. And um, through my experiences that that I've seen. Uh, that is that's the big question i have i have a, a very dear friend from my wwe days um and he's been in recovery for i guess going on 10 years now and he'll be the first person to tell you you know you can go to rehab as many times as someone else wants you to go but until you're ready yeah. and and i mean really ready uh, you know it, you're not going to be able um to to complete uh, yeah. program and we also have to remember that addiction rewires your mind and, and or rewires your brain so it's not just go for 30 days and you're out and you're good to go it's yeah. a long process it's 18 months to two years mm -hmm. um, we do have uh, more facilities now one of the uh, one of the things that uh, we've worked on is getting churches involved so uh, when I first came into office I actually met with some of the churches as myself uh, District Attorney General Sharm Allen, Sheriff Tom Spangler, and State Representative Jason Zachary, and we talked about this issue and you know how churches could really help if they got activated. And out of those conversations, this is something started called the Knox County Church Network. And one of the things that they did uh, was they started a recovery clinic. It, it is a faith-based clinic, uh, but called uh, Renew Clinic. Uh, so th there are things out there for folks. Uh, but you know, probably the most important thing is uh, for the people that need the help it, it, is, is going and actually getting it and, and doing it. And that's something that has to come from within the person. Right. You know, and, and I know families struggle with this, and mm -hmm. even when I was in WWE, I'd see it. You know, WWE would pay for anyone who would ever work there, they would pay for them to go to rehab. Um, and unfortunately, you saw people who would go three, four, five times and you know, get out and then yeah, relapse I've again. I personally knew somebody that's been 13 times right. and right. they're still not ready. And right. me personally, um, you know, I went to jail and I violated, and, you know, one time it was for the family and then it was for probation. And then finally, I just, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Sure. You know, and so you were very involved in the recovery community. You seem very passionate about that, man, you know. It, it, it's just a huge issue. Um, right. You know, earlier I referenced the drug-related deaths. That's only one part of it. I mean, when we think about uh, infants who are born addicted, mm -hmm. uh, when we think about about 1% of the workforce across the state of Tennessee is out of work and we have all these jobs. I mean, employers are always coming to us saying we need workers and 1% of the entire workforce 
is not capable of working because of their addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's multi-layered. I mean, it costs a huge amount of money across the state. It costs about two billion dollars. Uh, addiction does. So uh, it, it's just a, it's a hugely important issue. In fact, I think it's the number one really negative issue that we face. You know, that it's the biggest challenge that we have. So many addicts suffer from severe mental health issues and so do you think that if those medications were enforced a little bit more for the addict that the drug problem would decrease with certain people? I do think that, uh, well, obviously there is, uh, th those two issues are really intertwined and yeah, I, I do think that um, mental health services in general uh, and we even look at homelessness I mean uh, you know all those things are, are really intertwined uh, so anything that we can do for more mental health services and, and we've been working on that um, is a good thing and and as you say you know for for some folks it's you know, their mental illness and they yeah. get off their uh, their medications that help them and then mm -hmm. end up uh, sadly back you know, with, with whatever their drug of choice is. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I do think that, you know, helping people um, through their mental health issues will also help with the addiction problem. I totally agree. Um, I know someone, um, he's on medication, but he gets it in his head that, you I'm know, fine. <laughs> after 30 <laughs> yeah. days, I don't right. need the medication, right. but it's just to fill that void. And, exactly, yeah. Um, unfortunately, he can be violent sometimes. Yeah. So, thank you for answering that question. Yes, ma'am. In a matter of personal opinion, how do you feel about the needle exchange? We have one here in Knox County. Mm -hmm. um, and. I, I don't think they're as controversial as they, as they once were. Um, you know, for us, when we look at public health in general and things like HIV yeah. and hepatitis, uh, folks are going to have to understand that uh, certain behaviors are going to happen whether they're like above, you know, wh whether you see them or not. And what happens is you end up getting a black market, you know, and all yeah. those sort of things. Um, so I, I I think our program is run very well here, uh, but that's one of the reasons is to try to mitigate uh, things like HIV and things like yeah. hepatitis. And, and again, what folks have to understand is, um, you know, I've heard people say, well, you know, you're provide you're enabling. It's not enabling because it's going to happen anyway, so you're just yeah. trying to control it a little bit better than it would otherwise be. It reduces on crime. People exactly. Yeah. Steal them from the stores and yeah. robbing pharmacies. Exactly. Right. Um, and I, had, I actually, um, I actually went uh, one day uh, to the needle exchange, and it was, uh, uh, it was very uh, enlightening for me because you, you know, you saw folks that, um, you know, you would stereotypically think of, you know, as a person who's that, yeah. and then you saw people in businesses, uh, which really drove home the point to me that addiction uh, is. Um, it's equal opportunity and it cuts across every social demographic category and strata. Unfortunately, that is true. Yep. So I am pretty sure you've heard someone say, once an addict, always an addict. When someone says that, what are your thoughts? I have very mixed feelings, and uh, I have been a, a, a friend of mine's nephew. Uh, I was at his AA ceremony when he got, uh, I think, his two-year medallion. Mm -hmm. And of course, at AA meetings, and I assume at Narcotics Anonymous meetings, you always say, you know, I'm so-and-so and I'm an addict or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know the reason they do that is because it's a challenge for the rest of your life. You're literally always in recovery, mm -hmm. but I don't think your addiction defines who you are. 
and I think that we have to be careful with that um, in in that regard. Yeah, it's something you know, it's something you always have to be aware of, and something that um, I don't necessarily want to struggle. Like the, I, my friends in recovery, you know, at this point, they're you know, I have a friend. He he can go out and you know, he can go to a bar, and it doesn't bother him, yeah. you know, and all that sort of stuff. But he also realizes that he can't have it. He cannot have a drink. You know, he knows that. Um, so I think that's where that thought, you know, comes in is, you know, this this is something that's just a reality. Uh, but I just, you know, I, I don't think it should define people, you know. Um, and, and that's, you know, that that's where that saying bothers me, you know, is um, when it's used to define people. You know, it's like, you know, I have certain things about my life and I'll always... I'll always be that way, um, but it also doesn't define who I am, right. and I think that's the case with addiction as well. So, the term addiction is a disease. Do you believe that? Addiction, as I said earlier, rewires your brain, yeah. and that yes, there are there are physical changes in your brain. Um, so yes, I would say that it is, and I think that some folks are more, for whatever reason, are more prone. Uh, to that problem than other people are, um, and it's also it's not a lack of willpower, you know. And the folks sometimes look and go, "Oh, they can just stop and they can just quit." No, they can't. I mean, because their brain is is different, and literally, that is as important. Uh, the drugs or whatever is as important as eating and drinking to someone like me. Uh, so yeah, when you define it like this, yes, it's not it's not just um, you know some sort of uh, just some sort of deal that people have or some sort of disorder. There really is uh, a physical change in your brain, and that's also why it's so hard to overcome and why it's a process and why you can't just snap your fingers and you know one day just say I'm not going to take that drink or I'm not going to take that pill or whatever, and you can do it. It's literally impossible. Yeah. It's like when you become an addict, you just don't wake up and say, you know, I think I'm going to do drugs today. Right. And one day you can't wake up and say, well, I'm just done. Right. You know, so. And then that's the thing I think we have to remember is, yeah, I don't think anyone ever wakes up and says, I'm going to become a drug addict or I'm going to become an alcoholic. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I think that as society we need to take uh, a more non-judgmental view of yeah. the issue. So Overdose Awareness Day, which is August 31st, um, you were personally involved in that. May I ask why? Again, this issue is just really important to me. Um, and also, you you, uh, you hear all the stories and get to talk to uh, the friends and the relatives and the loved ones of the people that um, have passed away. And uh, that really motivates you uh, because you realize that... Um, you realize it is an issue, and it's also hard sometimes because you know, when I throw out these statistics, that's someone's life that uh, has ended uh, tragically in many cases, um, and that can become overwhelming um, because it's like, man, what do we do? Um, but at the same time, you realize that it is important, and it it energizes you to keep on going as opposed to just throwing your hands up and saying, I don't want to see this anymore. Yeah. I remember last year we had all the shoes lined up for all the addicts that should be filling their shoes. Right. And I think in um, two weeks I had ten friends just overdose and die in yeah. a two-week period. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's very, very sad. Um, so... I guess you've already explained why addiction is such a main focus of yours right now, and I am grateful for that. And that's why I have progress, not perfection. I want to raise awareness, you know, the success of recovery to show that we do recover. Um, when I came off methamphetamine, my brain was very out of order, and you know, I did drugs for over two decades, and. Um, it's like learning to live again. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to say I'm happy with my life, and I didn't think it could be this good without drugs. So. 
yeah, that's awesome, and congratulations. Uh, uh, you should be very proud of yourself for doing that. You. Um, you know, we talked before we got on camera about Judge Cerny and the recovery court and all the great work that he yes. does, and I think that's one of the most important things that people need to remember is you're not alone. I mean, there's you know there are people that want to help. Um, you know, um, the uh, the Metro Drug Coalition um, we just recently launched the Gateway, which is a community hub uh, mm -hmm. to help w w with this issue. I'm I'm really excited about that. And there are more and more services that that are coming online. Those wouldn't happen if nobody cared. You know, yeah. Judge Cerny does what he does. He's a judge, you know. He could, he could he could be doing anything as far as hearing any cases that he wants, but yeah. he is uh, very invested in the recovery court. Yeah. So if if nothing else, I hope that people who are watching this who are struggling with addiction realize that there are people there are people that care and there are people that that will help you. Um, but you're probably you're going to have to be the person that actually makes the call to get that help. Yeah, you definitely have to ask for help for you not for family or friends or a job or anything. Right. You have to want it for yourself. You have to find that self-worth. That's right. And Judge Cerny is absolutely amazing. Um, love going to the milestones. Hi, Judge Cerny, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> but he definitely is amazing. Yes. So, since you have been mayor, have you noticed a growth in the recovery community? I, absolutely, I think. Uh, there's been a lot of emphasis that's been put on addiction and recovery. Uh, I think that some of the programs like the Recovery Court are expanding. Um, we're adding a, a mental health court, which is uh, something I'm really looking forward I, to. I read about that. Yeah. I think it's so, amazing. Um, you know, so there are other ways of, and as we talked about, you know, addiction and mental health are often very intertwined. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are things happening that I'm really excited about. Absolutely. Uh, someone mentioned to me about a fentanyl awareness day. It's like overdose awareness day, but it's solely based around fentanyl. And um, I, they're still in the works of it, but uh, I'm excited. Not, excited is not the word, but I'm... Sure. It's you know, good to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. It's good to see those things happening. It, it really is. I love seeing people come together and everything. So how will you continue to support the recovery community? Well, for me, it's just advocating um, for the things that we've already set in motion. Um, when I first came into office, I, I realized, you know, again, just from my personal experiences and, and uh, observations, seeing how big an issue this was. Uh, so we launched an initiative called All for Knox, uh, along with uh, Mayor O'Hara, who is the, uh, the city of Knoxville mayor at the time. Uh, and that was really a community uh, community effort or, or effort to get all the community partners to talk about um, what they could do to identify gaps in services, uh, sometimes to identify redundancies and duplicities. Uh, you know, if, if you, know, you have one person, I'm sorry, you have like five people doing this or five organizations doing this, but nobody doing this. Yeah. Um, you know, how, how can you switch that around? As well as, you know, what can employers do? What can various sectors of our community do? Um, and I'm really proud of that. We've seen some good work come out of that. Um, and we've seen some, been able to get some federal grants and do some different things because of that initiative. Uh, so we'll continue doing that. Um, right now, when I talk with the other county mayors in our area, it's top of mind for all of us. Um, so you know, I, I think that there'll be some some more some more efforts. We'll continue to do what we're doing and, and do some more things as well. Well, I know as a recovery community, we're going to continue to help the still sick and suffering addict and do what we can do on our part as well. And I think that's really important because you know I can sit here and talk about it all day. I don't I know. Too. <laughs> but well but I don't know. I've never yeah. been in that situation. And I think that's one of the most important things is when folks like you who have been, you know, through the fire and understand it when you're willing to go out and to help other people i think that speaks volumes absolutely i've been to a 12-step calls that's when um you're worried about somebody and you get a group together and you go and check on that person um i've sat in on interventions and um sometimes the outcome is good sometimes it's not but uh it helps when you know 
to build a network. That's what we call it is a network of people in recovery. Sure. And it's a beautiful thing. So also in your from your heart, if the sick and suffering addict were standing right there, what would your message or suggestion be to that addict? I would tell them that people care and that they're not alone and that there are people that want to help. And if they're not ready for help right now, when they are, you know, don't don't be afraid, don't be ashamed to reach out because I, I think that uh, I think that society's views are, have changed as well, and that people do realize that this is something that can happen to anyone, uh, and we we do want to help. Yeah. Well, that is coming from Mayor Jacobs, and I want to thank you so much for being on Progress Not Perfection. And um, my name is Della, and I'll see you next time. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. There you have it folks, that's coming from Mayor Jacobs himself. And again, I'm at the City County Building and I wanna say thank you so much to Mayor Jacobs for giving me your time to sit down and speak with me. Addiction is a real problem. The entire staff at the Mayor's office was absolutely generous and thank you so much. It was a pleasure to meet all of you. Keep in mind Knoxville, addiction isn't just drugs and alcohol. Addiction can be anything. But one thing about recovery, you gotta chase your recovery like you chase the dope man. So, my name is Della. Again, this is Progress Not Perfection. Let's continue to grow. Let's come together and fix this problem. I'll see you guys next time.